Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, obviously, disappointing performance on uh, uh, on Saturday, and uh, had a long staff meeting yesterday and talked about a lot of things. And um, it's interesting because if you look at offense, defense, and special teams, I don't think anybody could point a finger at anybody because I don't think any unit played up to its capability. Um, and we struggled on third down on defense. We struggled um, to rush the football early, uh, had a couple of turnovers, uh, couldn't get off the field, had a up- couple opportunities to kick a couple field goals that maybe could have made it a one-score game late, didn't do it. And so, um, you know what, we got some guys hurting. I know that because they want to win and want to be successful. And so, you know, our job is this week to get them right and right the ship because we have another opportunity at home here. And uh, – uh, these seniors, especially these six-year guys that came in with me when I started and the fifth-year guys that have uh, uh, been around us for a long time, I want to make sure that those guys have an opportunity to go out uh, uh, go out well so and go out successfully. So we've got to attack this week and have uh, a, a really good week of practice. And um, uh, we've got some guys banged up that, that we don't know a lot about yet that um, will probably be more later in the week. Um, but we do have some injury issues that uh, we've got to make sure that we have enough depth. Coach, uh, I want to clear this thing up first because we've been getting a rumor that you're going to retire. I just want to put that out there so you, you shoot it down. I don't know where you, you got that from, um, Fitz. I haven't said that to anybody. Okay. Yeah, I was just okay. okay. <laughs> Especially if I'd announce it here and yeah. he's sitting yeah, here. <laughs> I would have had more issues than that. Plus, my wife's not in town. I'd be really in trouble. <laughs> with that out of the way, what uh, what any big decisions to come out of that meeting with your coaches? Um, you know, we've got to focus on the task at hand, and um, I'm not a, I'm not any any time uh, thinking about making wholesale changes on one side of the ball or another or personnel, whatever you want to talk about. Um, We've got to find a way to get better, and we've got to find a way to stay the course. And uh, um, Gene hired me six years ago to run this football program, and I'm going to run this football program to the best of my ability every day to give us a chance to be successful on Saturday. And I know we've had a couple of tough losses um, and that I'm frustrated about, um, but um, we still have, in my opinion, a really, really strong culture and a strong program here. The injuries and absences. Yeah. You got some younger guys on the field, yeah. and Dante Cephas kind of evolved into a bigger role. What did you see that is tangible out of that? Boy, um, Trace Bybee and Dante Cephas came up big time. Um, Keegan uh, had an injury during uh, during warmups, and um, J Jack wasn't uh, available Saturday, so it so it became those two guys getting the lion's share of the reps. Um, with Jason Ty, and I was so proud of, of Trey Spivey getting that opportunity and making some really good plays. The two-point conversion catch was phenomenal, and the fourth down catch was big. That That's going to help him grow and continue to improve as he's getting uh, more experience in this system. Seif, uh is just here for a year, but uh, I thought he showed up and, and played big time. And then when we lost Dylan as well, we had a lot of things – that probably wouldn't have mattered. I think Arizona State had a really good plan, but we had a lot. We had maybe 10, 12 plays specifically for uh, Dylan that um, we couldn't get off and couldn't get executed because he wasn't in there. And um, probably the only thing that that I regret was not finding a way to still talk about getting those plays involved and utilizing somebody else. You guys also know that probably DJ's not at 100% either. Um, and he's fighting through a lot of things, just like a lot of kids are in, in later November. Um, but we had to lean on, on DJ quite a bit. Then we throw Joe Jackson in, and Joe Jackson did some really good things. So there's some promising things coming out of, uh, of some unfortunate uh, circumstances on Saturday with Trey Spivey, with Joe Jackson, um, playing really good football, and uh, I know that's given those kids a lot of confidence, and it's given our, our staff a lot of confidence in them. Real quick, any injury update on Keegan and Dylan? Um, don't have an injury update on either one. Neither one will practice today. Um, I would say we're more hopeful for Dylan, um, but I wouldn't rule out Keegan uh, yet uh, either. 
Uh, probably going to be more mid to later week. When you have trouble uh, with something as, as routine as long snapping, especially with, with two, two different guys yep. having trouble, what, 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 what are kind of the steps that go into yeah. correcting that? You know, um, Nate Katzer, who runs our special teams, that's as good as there is in, in, in football, not college. He's an NFL guy as well. Um, we've got to put him probably more in, in as best we can pressure situations in practice because we're really good. Um, Monday through Thursday, doing that stuff. And then for whatever reason, um, we've been good all year doing it. And then the last two games, we haven't been. And um, um, I know it's some of it is a technique that Nate's been working on with him to try to uh, alleviate and then try to get him in a little bit more, quote, pressure situations as best you can. We're not going to be able to put 50,000 in there and, and have him go snap. But uh, We've got confidence in, in, in both those two kids, in Mason and Andrew, and um, we've got to get those guys over the hump and get them out of that because um, uh, we've got a really good kicker, and, and Chris is kicking with a lot of confidence. So um, those are the guys we have, and we're going to keep working with them, and we're going to get it figured out. And then offensive line-wise, what, what's, what's the biggest thing you feel like they need to do to get back to where they were you know, midseason? Um, couple is we've played some really good defensive linemen and we're not getting the movement uh, in the interior as we probably were earlier in the season. And that's not a whole lot more than probably losing some one-on-ones. I, I hear the same stuff that, that um, you guys hear. It's not a different defense. It's not a different blitz. It's not a different stunt. It's a lot of times just not having success in the one-on-ones and then to that, we are getting some creases that a healthy DJ hits those things and is, is into the next level, and we've missed a couple of those um, probably due to a little bit of DJ's health. And so um, those are all things that um, uh, we've got to improve and get better at, and um, that's why we're, we've got to have guys like Joe Jackson. If they're healthy, we've got to be able to use those kids. Where can uh, Avery really take a big step forward in your eyes these last two games? Well, I, I thought he took a real good step forward from a leadership standpoint in the last couple of weeks. He's been a lot more vocal um, and uh, taken a lot of the ownership of the offense and himself in the fact of he, he knows he can play better. I thought he threw the ball um, – for the most part, pretty pretty well. He missed a couple um, that I know he and Wells have, have talked about. Um, I want him to cut it loose a little bit more in running the football. Uh, maybe not in the first quarter on the first drive, but in the red zone and in the fourth quarter because he's a real threat with his legs. Um, but, you know, we're 10 games into this, and he's still growing, still learning, and I see some improvement. But I know that there's more in Avery. I think we all know that there's more in Avery, and he knows there's more in him. That, that's the thing I love about that kid is he doesn't think, no, I've arrived. I've figured this out. He, there's so much more football in him, and he's going to continue to get better and play better. Um, Chris, we all go through, you know, difficult things in life where it can be distracting and hard to focus on work. But, you know, you can't really take time off right now like yeah. some of other people in jobs can. How do you deal with with things this it's time of year? It's been a, probably the biggest struggle for me right now, not having family around. Um, uh, the, peop the, the guys upstairs and the guys downstairs, everybody in this building has gone out of their way to help – the situation that we're going through. Uh, all the wives have been really helpful in the situation we're going through. It sucks. I'll just be honest with you, it does. But when you're surrounded by people that care and surrounded by people uh, that love Ron and I, it, it, um, it makes it easier. It's, it's not easy, but it makes it easier. And um, um, some positive things are starting to, to, to flip for us, and, and we're going we're gonna to kind of pray on that. And, and and realize that there are some positive things uh, moving forward. Well, that's good to hear. Um, Football-wise, your offense did kind of find some stuff in that second half, especially when you're going hurry up. Yep. Are there any elements of that you can use in a full game? Yeah, absolutely. Um, getting people um, uh, just off balance and, and not ready uh, for a situation, I, I think, 
um, you've got to get into a rhythm to get to no huddle. It, if I've been on both sides of it where you just go tempo three plays in a row and you have the ball for 16 seconds, then you're punting the ball and people are like, why the heck are you going tempo? You're just killing your defense. So you've got to be able to get a first down and then start rolling on things. And um, we were seeing a lot of vanilla stuff late in that game because they were up two scores, um, but we were still having success. And so some of those things need to be able to carry over um, into our choice down and normal down and distance. And I think probably seeing the confidence with which we played wet, ate, played at when we were no temp, uh, no huddle and, and, and tempo will we'll probably give – uh, our offensive guys even more confidence to run more. As a defensive coach, is there any key you stress with the guys about improving on third down defense? Yeah, um, you know we're it's it's everything. It's rushing the passer. It's having great rush lanes. And this kid did a great job of scrambling uh, when we are pressuring because there were some times that we pressured and maybe we don't stay on the upfield shoulder and he scrambles out and then he throws it off balance. That kid played a really good game and hits a guy in, in stride. Or we're playing zone and the ball is thrown and we're not breaking crisply all at the same time so we can vice that tackle. That's an inside-outside tackle. Um, that we're just not doing a good enough job. And that's not just uh, this past week. One of the things that I know that Coach Klanderman has been frustrated with is we've been really good on third and short and really poor on third and long. And, it, and that's usually just the opposite. And we've got to do a better job of mixing in pressure and, and some zone coverage and, and doing a better job of playing the sticks. You talk always about trying to get better each day. Do you feel the last couple of weeks you're still moving in the right direction? or is you, Well, you don't see it on the scoreboard for sure, so that'd be I'd be naive to say, oh yeah, we're we're getting a ton better. We've plateaued a little bit, and we we've got to kick it in the in the in the tail these last two weeks to play better football. And um, you know when you you play more guys, and and that's been a, that's been good. We've been able to play a few more of those guys we talked about on offense, um, but um, we're not playing as well as we're capable. And I think everybody sees that from where we were at in the middle of the season. Even when we were winning close ball games, I thought we were playing a little bit better. We were playing the last couple of weeks, in my opinion, hoping not to lose rather than playing our tail off to win. And you can't play this game tentative, hoping you don't lose. And, and that's not losing the game. It's hoping I don't lose on this third and long. It's hoping I, I, I can convert this third and short, whatever it may be. Hoping I can make a great operation on, on, on the field goal. We got to play a little bit more loose and just cut and cut it loose and play fast, and that's kind of going to be what we talk about today when we first get with the guys. I know this is an important topic to you. Uh, I was wondering if you might be able to dig in a little deep on the on the senior class and just what these guys have meant to you for five and six years. Yeah, um, you know they've meant everything to our program and meant everything to how we've been able to change. Um, the culture that we have here. I don't want to talk about previous cultures and stuff, just the culture that we had in, in the fact of um, everybody that has fifth and sixth year guys that have stayed in the program went through COVID. Everybody does. And if you stayed in that program, man, I, I don't know how guys came out of COVID saying, boy, we're just flowing and, and everything's um, just matriculating great because we have this great routine. Nobody had a routine at all. And in, in spring of 2021, we kind of came up with the core values of discipline, commitment, toughness to be selfless. And those guys, along with the guys that graduated in, in 21, 22, and 23, kind of championed that through the last handful of years to where those things become synonymous in everything we do in life. And, um, you know, I, I tell these guys and I tell parents all the time, if the only thing your kid does is play football and get a degree, man, I have failed you miserably. I want to make sure your son can be a great NFL player if that's the case, a great entrepreneur, a great businessman, great school teacher, firefighter. But, but I'm going to make sure when he leaves here he's ready to be a great community member, a great father, a great husband. That, that's a win for me. And, and those, those players have bought into that, the ones that have been here so long, that they've had some great wins, they've had some really tough losses. But I look at that senior class, I'm like, 
those guys are prepared for life, and they're prepared to, ta- to take on anything they're going to. And they're going to have a lot of adversity at, in life, but with what they've dealt with uh, here, they're going to be equipped and prepared for it. Your goal, obviously, is to send them out the right way. How, how important is that? Is that maybe a yeah. message that has resonated throughout? Yeah, um, but, but that's all results, results, results. So we got to find a way to win this game. Yeah, we've got to find a way to prepare really well and have great – game plan so we can execute those things so that on Saturday when it chips get down we're just playing football and playing free and not worried about what could happen um, but without a doubt I want to make sure that those guys um, leave that bill the last time uh, with a win and and to be successful and and to play their best football and that's the thing that every team is searching for still is nobody's played the perfect game this year probably is impossible but we need to continue to grow so we can play closer to that perfection. I want to get your thoughts on the uh, the drive when it was 24-14 that ended the missed field goal. Yep. Um, just your thoughts on the drive of, like, the substituting and, you know, just things yeah. like that. Yeah, that's where people kind of don't understand the rule of when the ball goes out of bounds on your sideline, There, it, we weren't substituting. It's an automatic substitution. Meaning, if the ball's anywhere near the white on your sideline, it's an automatic substitution because nobody knows if somebody's coming off the sideline. That's just the NCAA rule. And so that happened to us three times out of five plays. And where it was caught, tackled, out of bounds, or right on the ticks, we're not sure if it's inbounds, and it's an immediate open. The thing that we have to get adjusted in college football, it's not the official's fault, it's the system's fault. That thing stays open, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and now you can bring a guy out. Now you can bring another guy out. And you guys see it. Everybody's doing it. I'm going to jog out. Fitz doesn't know I'm coming in for him. Hey, Fitz, you're out. Oh, me? Well, you shouldn't have been in the game anyway because you're not a good enough player, Fitz, but you're, you're in the game. Oh, okay, so then I come out. So then I waddle off, and, and that happened, and we lost – a minute and a half. That's something that we all know. I talk to the officials about. We talk as coaches. We've got to get cleaned up. Nate Catcher laughs about it because in the NFL, he'd be like, no, that ball's snapping. We're going. We've got to get that figured out in college football. It's not the officials' fault. They're doing, they're doing it by the book. Uh, but teams are taking huge advantage of that. And so that's something in the offseason I know we have to look at um, because it happens in Every game you watch. Um, so that's what that situation was happening. And the easy thing would be to say, don't throw it into your boundary. Okay, well, then you're going to take half the field and say you just can't throw it there. If that's where his read took him, I don't want to tell Avery, you can't throw it there because we're afraid we're going to be close to the white, and then they're going to not stop the clock. I mean, boy, that's a lot of stuff going through that kid's head. And so that was a circumstance that obviously we, we've got to learn from, but also we've got to find some ways to fix that in college football. Cincinnati needs a, a win to become eligible, but they've lost three in a row. I wanted to get your thoughts on, on their offense, their quarterback. Yeah, they're, they're, I just got done watching a, a fair amount of them. I, I, I haven't paid attention a lot to any of the teams until they get on our schedule. Um, that that uh, They're a really capable football team. Um, they've got a couple good running backs, a really good quarterback that's an experienced guy, a defense that's very similar to ours. Uh, they're a 3-3-5 three, three, team that um, does a lot of things that we do. Iowa State does some of these teams. Um, and they've been in every opportunity and had chances to win, um, just like we have in the last two weeks. And so uh, the margin for error we've talked about is really small in college football. And, um, you know, it, you got to get to that fourth quarter and have your kids believe you're going to find a way to win. They're, they're a, a good football team that's very capable. You talked about the zone coverage a little bit, but could you evaluate how your safeties are playing over the last month or so? Um, I'd say okay, but I'd say that about when, when you when you talk about where we have been the last three weeks, beat KU, had lost a couple games after a bye. Once again, I, I, we can't pick one group and say they're they're not playing up. Everybody needs to play better in, in, in collectively, offense and, and defense and on special teams. We all can be a little bit better, whether that's in a technique, whether that's in a read, whether that's missing a read. Um, we've played some really good wide receivers that um, 
um, get a step on us and, and we're not able to close, whether that's technique, whether that's speed, whether that's a great throw and a great wide receiver. We've, we've got to be better there, but maybe we, sh maybe we can pass rush a little bit better. It's, it's so hard when you think of rushing offense, you think of just the offensive line. Well, the tight ends, wide receivers, and running backs are a part of that. When you think pass defense, sometimes you think just DBs. Well, did the linebacker get enough depth? Did we, did we have a great rush lane, or did we give the guy ability to step out of the pocket, step into the pocket? That's why it's the greatest team game there is in football, because um, it, uh, every, all 11 got to be functioning on the same page and, and doing a good job of executing. That's one final thing for me. Was there ever a point Saturday where you even considered maybe Avery coming off for a series, kind of hit the reset and see if something else worked? No, uh, we, we really didn't. Um, I I think he's he gives us the best chance to be successful, whether or not he's um, struggling through a, peer, a, a play or whatever. He gives us the best chance to be successful. Uh, one other one that I had was uh, we're going to be able to talk to Mott and TP today, and I was curious if you might be able to speak to maybe what their leadership has meant to this group. Yeah, TP is the epitome of – perseverance and uh, have an adversity strike two years in a row he lost his season and to have that that ability and that want to to say no I'm going to get back on that field oh it happened again I'm going to get back on that field and having the season uh, that he's having um, it's a testament to the amount of work he's put in and, and um, he's a tremendous leader he's a vocal guy um, Mott has walked onto the program, earned a scholarship, become one of the best defensive linemen in the Big 12, not even a question. He should be a first-team all-conference guy. Um, plays the run equally as good as he rushes the passer. Does a great job with Ryan, Jordan, Cheedy of continuing to teach and help those guys um, as, as they become the heir apparent to him. So both guys have meant the world to the program.